Hello, good afternoon. Um, welcome to our presentation about biosecurity software. Uh, it will be a presentation mainly focused on introduction of the of the software. You will see an introduction. Um, here we can see the content. It will be, first, we will see an introduction to the software, uh, the different options that we have. Uh, then we will see some example scenarios in which we can use um, the like by security software, and then we will have a practical part uh, where we'll, we'll do a setup of an installation, of an access control installation. Okay, what is ZK Biosecurity? ZK Biosecurity is a web based, all in one advanced access control solution. So it means uh, in our ZK TICO portfolio, it is the software, the solution that is focused on the project. It's uh, focused on the on the big installations where we have some special requirements. Um, it's also important to know that ZK Biosecurity only supports the products of the green label product line. It's a special product line for the people that don't know it. It's a special product line that we have in Biosecurity uh, that we have in ZK TICO, and it's uh, let's say um, you can say it's like the premium product line in our in our company. Uh, here we see some uh, different modules that uh, ZK Biosecurity has integrated. With these modules, we try to cover most part of the security installations in, in different, in different uh, situations. Uh, first, we have uh, a module that is the user management, of course. Then we have an advanced uh, an access control uh, module that with advanced functions. This is the most important module in, in all the software. Uh, we have an, att I'm an attendance module. We have an elevator module with uh, online and offline functions. We have a hotel management. We have a visitor management. Then we have a module dedicated to the public parking management. We have a guard protocol, um, the guard, uh, guard protocol control. We have a CCTV linkage. With the CCTV linkage, we are able to link our access control with our CCTV system. Uh, that means that we can have some video records in case that we want to link some special events that are happening in the access control system. We are able to link them with, um, with our CCTV system. And we also have a new module, recent, it's a recent module, that is a consumption module. Consumption module is related with the consumption in a restaurant or an internal canteen in the in the company, and if we want to charge some credits in the card, we can discount this card uh, this credit if uh, if the employees want to buy something inside of the company. These are some of the main features that we have in our in the ZK Biosecurity software. Um, we have an integration. We have an integration with RPR for parking. Uh, we have an all-in-one biometric identification. It means that the software supports all identification verification, uh, all uh, biometric verifications that we have uh, that we are supporting in, in ZK Tico. It is a software for a high that has a high number of door capacity. It means it is suitable for big installations. Uh, actually, we have a capacity of 2,000 doors for each of the servers, and with multiple server, we are reaching up to 8,000 doors which is a very, very huge installation. Um, there's a web-based time and attendance module. We have some email notifications. We have automatic backups. We are, uh, the CCTV module is compatible with OMBIF. It means that we support most of the, most of the cameras in the market. We have a global anti-passback and linkage functions. We can define different areas and then we can apply anti passback to that areas. We have the possibility of an API for third-party integration, so it's easy to, to interconnect with third-party software. We have flexible card formats. It means that we can use um, card readers from third-party companies and easily integrate them into, into our system. We have an online guard control, as I mentioned before. We can online check the status of if our guard patrols are if our guard um, security guard stuff is doing the um, 
is doing the the, the rounds uh, in the correct way. Uh, it is, has a user friendly UI user interface. We have flexible verification modes. It means we can have different verification modes for each of the time schedules. So we can have, for example, a high security time time zone in which we have um, some additional verification, and we can have low security time zones in which only, for example, only a, a card verification or pin verification is okay. We are able to uh, enable and disable doors. Okay, this means that the software is um, controlled by a license, and this license depends on the number of points that we have for each of the, of the modules. In the case of access control, it depends on the number of doors that we have. So, um, if we don't have a license, uh, we don't have in, enough doors, we can disable some doors to add some more, so it's, it's flexible. Um, we can also assign uh, time zones to our exit buttons and auxiliary outputs. Uh, that means I can have a time zone in which I can activate, I can use the exit button and other time zones in which I disable the, um, the exit button. We also have a hotel management module and we have uh, um, also an elevator controller uh, where we can manage um, also the, the elevator controller offline. Okay, uh, there are two modes for the elevator controller. One is the offline mode in which we connect directly the controller to the software using the TCP IP connection. And there's another, uh, there's another uh, mode of this uh, elevator controller that is the offline, uh, where we store the um, user cr uh, credentials inside of the MIFR card. And with this MIFR card, we can um, operate the uh, elevator controller. We also have the possibility of managing, remote managing, using a mobile application. This mobile application is uh, is uh, used for um, for the management of the of the software. Okay, these are some example scenarios where we can use the ZK Biosecurity software. One of these sample scenarios is the visitor management. In a visitor management, we have the possibility of the integration of the OCR scanner. It means that with an OCR scanner, we are able to get the data out of a, uh, out of a passport, out of ID card, and directly autofill some information for the, for the visit. It is very common that in big buildings, there's a reception desk in which um, a visitor has to, to check in when he arrives at the building. And if there are too many visits, it's complicated to type in all the information all the time when a new visit comes to the to the building. So the OCR scanner can be helpful in that cases. Uh, we can also uh, print out a personalized card for the visit. We can also print out a badge with a QR code for the reader. We can also use the facial recognition for the visits. It means that we can take a picture of the visit, and this uh, picture can be used to enroll this user in uh, in, our, in our access control devices. So we can have access for this user to the visitor, access levels only using his face that we caption in, in the reception desk. Um, when we re register a visitor, we can activate for him some visitor access levels and some elevator levels. It means that when we register him, he will get an access control level. That means that he probably can access through the main door and not secondary doors, and um, and he can also uh, uh, we can also activate him uh, some special elevator levels if he his visit the person that he's going to visit is in a in a, in a special level he we can uh, give him the access rights to access to this level. It's also possible to integrate it with a signature pad uh, to collect the con consent of the visit. This is important now because um, of the GDPR law. It is uh, necessary to, to get the consent of the visit that uh, you're recording his personal data. We can set some alerts. If the, we can set some alerts if the people, uh, how many times the, the, visit, the uh, visit has stayed in our building. And uh, we also have the possibility of an employee page. Uh, it means that the employee 
can access to his to his personal page and he can visit he can manage his own visits he can um, check in his own visits and he can check if the visit has already arrived this is a second scenario example scenario it's a hotel management okay the hotel module in, in setka biosecurity allows us to manage our offline hotel logs it is the, um, the hotel logs, the LH, in this case we have the picture of the LH 8600 and the LH 7500. 7, uh, it's possible to, um, these are um, offline hotel logs and it's possible with this module to manage this what, uh, offline hotel logs. We, are also, uh, we can also do some room reservation. We can we have also an integration with the OCR scanner if it's necessary to to um, help with the check-in of the visits uh, of the users, um, the guests in this case. We have a real-time display with the room status. We are also um, managing uh, the lost card, it means that if someone has lost the card, we can generate a new card that um, that deletes the old card. Let's say. Uh, it is also integrated with the access control and elevator. It means that with the same card that we give to one guest to, to open his room in the hotel, he can also open rooms that belong to the access control. For example, if there are some special rooms like VIP rooms, like uh, um, swimming pool, we can, uh, we can activate, we can use the same card to activate that part. Also the parking. And we can also, in the same card, use, for, use it for the elevator control. It means that uh, if his room is in uh, floor number two, we can give, uh, activate in his card that he will only have access to uh, floor two. We also have consumption man management. It means that we can, uh, we are able to, um, to uh, bill at the end of the of the of the stay. Uh, the consumption that he, the, the guest has done in the, the mini bar and the restaurant, and then generate the bill with this. And this is new. Uh, we are going to release um, in the next weeks a new system, a new hotel lock system that will be um, online, will be wireless, and will be online. This will give us um, some new functions that we don't have in the offline system. Uh, in that case, we can make some remote openings and we can check also the online status of each of the door locks. Okay, this is an example of an advanced access control system. Okay, an advanced access control system where we can have global linkages, we can have advanced global anti passback functions. Uh, with this, I mean that uh, in our standard access control systems, it's not possible to have communication between different uh, controllers. So that means uh, if I have mm, uh, an installation of eight doors and I have two four-door four panels in my system, I'm not able to make, for example, an anti-passback between door one and door eight because door one and door eight belong to different controllers. So there's no communication between these controllers. But ZK Biosecurity is able to solve this because there's one there's one feature that is the background verification. So the verification, um, at least uh, at the end, is done by the server. So the server sees all the system like a global system. That's no problem to have um, different anti-passbacks between doors that don't belong to the same to the same controller. The same happened with a with a linkage. I can have a linkage input in one controller, and this can affect to all the system. Um, we can have also linkages to our CCTV system, and we can we can do some. Uh, we also have linkages to our CCTV system, and we can uh, do some recordings. Um, for example, if there's a special alarm in my access control system, like a forced door, we have some door sensors. With the door sense, we know this. We know know the door status. If we know the door uh, the door status, we can know if someone has opened a door without verification. That means it will be an um, open forcely event. Um, this event I can 
uh, link it in my CCTV system to have a recording about this kind of events. So later in the reports, we can review if we see some alarm or some special event and we have a recording for this, we can uh, review the recording of this alert. We have also email alerts. It means that for the different events, we can send one email to, to the user that we want. We have an area capacity control. It means that we can define an area and we can set the maximum and also the minimum capacity of the people in that area. Uh, we have an who is in sight list, uh, on, uh, online who is in sight list for each of the areas. It means that in real time, we can know uh, which people are in, in any of these areas. Uh, we also support UHF long range readers and uh, LPR recognition. We have flexible verification modes. I mentioned this before. We are able to set a different for the different time zones. We are able to set different verification modes. Um, this has a special uh, special functionality that is in, in some in some cases between office hours. It's not really necessary to have a high security verification. We can set, for example, during office hour from nine to eighteen, uh, we can have a verification that is only card. And after six in the afternoon, when the, um, when the office is supposed to be empty, then we can have a higher security mode that combines uh, fingerprint and card, for example. Uh, we are able to make a remote management using a mobile application. Uh, this is important for an advanced access control system because in an advanced access control system, there's normally one person that is in charge of the access control. And this person, needs to be something like 24 hours available. Uh, something can happen, someone has forgot his card and you need to make a remote open. Um, there's someone that was uh, fired that day and you need to delete him immediately from the system. So the mobile application uh, is a very useful tool for the administrator of the access control system because he can easily manage um, everything from, his mo from a mobile application. You don't need to be physically there in the installation. He can do it comfortable at home, and it's uh, very convenient. Uh, we have also an optional backup um, service um, for uh, for backup service uh, for backup servers. Okay, so in some critical installation, uh, the server can never be on offline. So. Um, we have some special service that can uh, provide a second server, second backup server, that in case of failure of the first server, it will, let's say, jump to the second server. And we have an interactive online map. Okay, this is, um, this is now the um, practical part of, of the presentation. Uh, in which um, I want to show you um, a setup, a setup of uh, access control system using Setkey Biosecurity. Uh, in this case, for for this uh, practical issue, I, I'm I've prepared here on my desk um, one in Bio Pro controller, which is connected via TCP/IP to my PC. In my PC, I have. Uh, a running Setka by security installation. I have connected a USB reader and to the controller I have connected via RS485 an FR1500 slave fingerprint reader. Okay, the target of this uh, practical session is uh, first I want to show you how to configure the IP address, server, uh, server IP and the server port in the controller. Then we will create some time, some time zones and access level. We will create a new user. We will perform uh, a verification with this new user. And uh, later we will do some overview of uh, the most important access control functions. For this, I'm going to change to my web browser. Okay, I will log out. Okay, um, first uh, you can see this is the IP address of the controller, okay? 
This is the default IP of all of all our controllers, 192.168.1.201. Uh, by default, this is the IP address of all our controllers. Uh, you see that if I access to this IP address, I have access to web server. The default identification is admin admin. Okay, here I can configure the IP address of my controller and important, I also have this push settings here. Okay, in the push settings, this is important. This is the most important part. Here I have to set the IP address and the, and the port uh, where my biosecurity server is running. Okay, in this case, uh, the server address is 192.168.1.20. And the port is 7777. This is the same information that I've entered here. I just have to confirm it. In this case, I didn't make any change. Um, that's why it's not asking to reboot. If I make some change, um, the controller will need to reboot. Okay, this is the... Um, this is the main screen, the, the enter screen of the Seki by security software. By default, it is also admin admin. Okay. Uh, here you see we have the different all the modules that I that I have mentioned before. Uh, today we are only going to see an introduction of the access control module. Uh, to we have now defined in our controller the IP address and port for our Zetgate by security um, server. Now if we click on device, we can click on search make a search and then we'll look for our controller okay here we see it has find our controller. Okay, it is an Embio 100 Pro controller, and the server address is uh, is correct because I have already entered this information in the con in the web server of the controller. So I just have to click on edit. Uh, here I can change the name of the controller. In this case, I will call it um, Test Embio. Um, here I can add it to a master level. Okay, the master level uh, is for very simple installations where um, everyone will access to all the doors 24 hours a day. Um, then if I add this controller directly to the master level, all the users that I will create have directly access to the doors of this controller. But I will not do it in this case because I will create a special um, a special access level for, for, for the users. It's always recommended to clear the information because there can be some information from previous installations and it's always recommended to clear all the information. Okay, uh, you see the controller will restart now, so it takes some seconds. And then when we refresh, our controller will appear here. Okay, you see that the controller is already added to the software. Uh, in the real-time monitoring, we can see in real-time what is happening in, in our controller. In this case, we have only one door in our installation because it's this controller that only has one door. Uh, 
now I will show you how to add a user to the controller and then make um, a verification with this controller. First, we have to create our time zones. By default, we have a 24 hour time zone. We can create new time zones. For example, we can create a time zone that is from 9 to 18, from Monday to Friday, means from Monday from 9 to 18. Uh, we copy this configuration until Friday, okay? And we have created a time zone that is from 9 to 18 from Monday to Friday. Then we will create an access level. By default, we have the access, the master access level that is always by default there. But we will create a new access level. This new access level, I will call it um, door one from 9 to 18. I will select a time zone that is from 9 to 18. And it asks me directly if you want to add some doors to this access level. I say yes, and it will be the door number one. Okay, so you see I've cre I have created an access level uh, that allows me to open door one from 9 to 18 from Monday to Friday. Now, if I go to create a user, I go to the personal menu, click on new. Uh, user ID one, name, last name. Um, optionally, I can use a picture. Um, I can select a picture. I can use my webcam to capture a picture. This picture that I capture here uh, can be also sent to our visible light devices, to our visible light rec face recognition devices. And it's possible with uh, to enroll my face using this uh, user picture. Uh, here I can register my fingerprint. I will connect my USB reader to the PC. We click on register. We select the finger that we want to enroll three times, one, two, and three. The fingers and fingers enrolled. You see we have the option of the duress fingerprint. Okay, duress fingerprint is a special fingerprint that I will select, for example, this one. Uh, and I will use this fingerprint in case that, I will use this fingerprint uh, in case that someone is forcing me to open the door. So I will use the regular fingerprint always. And if there is some uh, emergency situation and someone is forcing me, pointing me with a gun or something else uh, to open a door, I can use this fingerprint to open the door and it will um, activate a special event. And this event can be linked um, to an auxiliary output and it can uh, turn on my alarm system. Uh, and you see the access levels by default, the users have always the master access level. In this case, I'm not using the master access level for, for this controller, so I have to add the access level manually. In this case, I will assign this access level to my user. Okay, so the user number one, I have enrolled his fingerprint. I can also add the card here. If I know the card number, I just can directly type in the name, the number, or I can use a USB um, card reader to enroll the card, or I can just directly select here and say from which reader is the card coming, and I can directly, using the, the reader that is connected to the, to the controller, use this reader to enroll the card number. In this case, I am only have uh, used the fingerprint. Um, here we have some functions that we can add to the user. Um, one is we can set a valid time for him. In this case, there's no valid time. He will be um, just active until I delete him or I disable this user. Uh, I can have also a delay passage. It means that for some users, um, maybe they have some, they are, 
have a, they are using a wheelchair and they need some special um, additional time to go through the through the door. So I can activate uh, this delay passage here, and so I I will have some extra time. So okay, I've created the user. I have assigned him to the access level to open door one. So if we go to the real time monitor, and if I use my finger to, okay, you can see that I'm recognized. And um, in the real time monitor, I can also see a pop up with a user picture. If I use my duress fingerprint, you will see that it will activate an alarm. Um, okay, here in door, we have some um, different. Can, if we click on edit, we have some um, changes that we can do to the configuration, to the door configuration. Uh, the most important are this one. I can select the verification mode. In this case, I allow card or fingerprint. But it can be possible that. Uh, in some doors, I only want uh, to allow a special um, verification type. Um, for example, uh, I don't trust in the people, and it's possible that someone is passing the card to another, and I want to force that the people can only use the fingerprint. So I can select verification type only fingerprint, and on this door, only fingerprint will be allowed. In other case, I can set just automatic and it will allow all the verification types. Uh, here I can also set, uh, if I'm using a door sensor connected to my controller, I can, I can um, do the setup here. Uh, this, you see when I, have the, um, when I have a door sensor configured, it's, it has gray out to, to, to configurations that are only available if I have a door sensor. And one of them is this enable locking locking door when door is closed. Okay, this option is important because uh, the lock open duration is the time, the seconds that the door is activated, that the relay is activated. So if I'm very if there's a correct verification, the door will open for five seconds by default. Maybe I can have this time uh, up to ten seconds. So imagine in this situation, uh, someone verifies the door will be open for 10 seconds. Um, I verify, I go through the door, I close the door, and I do all the operation in only three seconds. So it means that the door will remain still open for seven additional se uh, seconds. With this option activated, um, when the when I verify on the door, I will open the door, and when the door detects that it's closed, it will disable the, the relay. And the door is again closed, and someone can be, come behind of me, and he will find the door closed. So it's an important function. Also, the door relay is the time. If I want to set a time uh, that I consider like a normal open. After uh, 15 seconds, there will be an alert, an alarm that the door wasn't closed correctly. Um, the passage delay is what I mentioned before. Maybe by default, the opening time is five seconds. And for people that are disabled or in wheelchairs, whatever, uh, they need some additional time. In that case, for the people that activate the, the uh, passage delay, they will have 15 seconds to go through that door. Um, the passage mode time zone is a time zone. Uh, during these hours, the door will be open. Okay, by default, there's nothing assignated. If I assign uh, from 9 to 18, it means that from 9 to 18, the relay will be activated and the door will be open. It's common that during the office hours, one door is open, and after the office hours, the door will be closed, and the people need to verify. 
it's important uh, that this passage mode time zone is just, let's say something like just the opposite of uh, active time zone. Active time zone, uh, in this case by default is 24 hours. It means the time that the door is active. If I set it only from nine to 18, it will mean that the door after 18 is not more active. So even if I have a 24 hours access level, I cannot open this door. The door is no more active. Um, the REX mode is the record to exit, request to ex exit. It, it means the exit button in this case is available 24 hours. If I assign here um, the time zone, in this case from 9 to 18, the exit button will be only available from 9 to 18. After 18, um, the exit button is disabled. Um, here in readers, we have an interesting option that is, uh, this is mainly to change the name of the of the reader. If we want to, by default, it assigns some name like uh, door one in, door one out. Maybe we want to change the name of the readers, we can change it here. Um, but this one, bind and bind to camera, it's important because uh, here, uh, in this case, I, I don't have added camera to my video module. If I add a camera to my video module here, I can link one camera with one uh, reader. So later in the linkages, um, if there's, uh, we create a linkage between um, an event in one door, uh, it will directly pop up or make a picture or make a recording of the camera that is linked to this reader. Um, on this part, uh, real-time monitor, I will make um, a review of the uh, most important um, access control functions that we will find in the software. You see that the access functions are divided in two parts. Uh, one are the basic access control functions, the standard access control functions that you can find in other software like Stepgay BioAccess, for example. And the advanced functions, these are functions only supported in Setgate Biosecurity and only supported by the products, uh, by the green label products. Uh, from the standard access control functions, we have the interlock. Uh, the interlock will only, in this case, I have no, I have only one door, uh, so I cannot create an um, interlock. Interlock is the very typically used in banks where we have two doors and we cannot open the second door if the first door is not closed. Okay, this is the interlock. Uh, the interlock will only work if we have some sensors configured. Without sensors, it's not possible to, config, uh, to have an interlock because the system has to know the status of the door. Uh, the linkages, I will go back later to the linkages because it has some some interesting things. Anti-passback, in this case, the anti-passback of the standard functions is a, is a normal, is a standard anti-passback. Uh, it means that I can create only anti-passbacks between the doors that belongs to a same controller. If we want to make anti-passbacks, more, co more com uh, complete anti-passback, more complicated anti-passbacks, we have a global anti-passback and advanced functions. Uh, in this case, I have only a one door con controller. So or with only one door, I have only one combination, only one possible combination. This possible combination is that I have an anti back between the, the, the two readers in my controller. Uh, if I have a two door controller or a five or uh, four door controller, I have um, more options. Okay, the first person normal open is a function that we can assign to one door. Um, we can set uh, this uh, function to one door. We assign a passage time zone. It means that uh, the door one, 
I assign this to one, uh, the time zone that is from 9 to 18. And I select a user. In this case, I only have one user. That is Miguel. So in this case, if Miguel punch uh, in door number one, it will activate this passage time zone. Uh, so the door will be open uh, until 18 or until Miguel punch again his card. Uh, this is uh, this is very common used in, in cases that there's a security guard controlling an entrance. Uh, if someone is controlling an entrance, then when this person arrives, he will be, he will be watching other people that go inside, so it's not necessary to for the people to verify. Um, if he leaves, the security guard leaves the, the entrance, he can punch his card and the people need to verify. Or if he forgets to, to disable this uh, passage time zone, after 16, after uh, this time zone, the people have to verify again. The multi-person group uh, is used if I need for one door to, um, to verify more than one person together. I can create a group of people and then assign to one door um, how many people need to punch together from that group to open this door. The verification mode is what I mentioned before that I can have um, for different time zones, I can have different uh, verification types. So I can create a low security verification time zone and I can create a high security verification time zone. This is for the same, okay. The linkage. Okay, the linkages is a very interesting function in which we can, uh, we can link different events. You see that here we have all our trigger conditions. It means that these are all the events that can happen in one controller. Uh, I show you before the duress fingerprint, you see the duress open alarm. So I can select this trigger condition, the duress open alarm, and this is the entry point, any of the doors. In this case, I have only one door, but in any of the doors. And here we'll select the outputs. What will I what I want to do if someone used the duress fingerprint? So first I can make an a connection, um, a connection an, an output. I can activate an output. In this case, I select auxiliary output one, and I want to activate for five seconds the auxiliary output one. So that means that if someone used the, the duress fingerprint, uh, the auxiliary output one will be activated for five seconds. So I can connect it to an alarm system or to some um, external. Uh, um, alarm sign, uh, sound, um, loudspeaker, or whatever. We can also link it with one email. In this case, if uh, I enter an email address, uh, it will send a notification to this email address. So I will receive if someone punch with uh, use his finger, a duress fingerprint, uh, I will receive an email that someone is using his duress fingerprint on in door one. And I can also link it, uh, make a linkage with my video system. Um, I can, if this event is happening, I can have a pop-up, real-time pop-up. Uh, in the real-time monitor, I will have a directly a pop-up to the door that is linked uh, to in with a video channel that is linked to this door. I can make a video record okay, for 30 seconds in this case that I can review later in my reports or I can make a capture. The capture is to take just take a picture. Okay, the advanced functions. Uh, the advanced functions are only available in Setgate Biosecurity. Uh, no other software has these advanced functions. And these advanced functions um, need uh, a special configuration. 
And this special configuration is the background verification. This option needs to be activated. If we don't have activated the background verification, we will not have the advanced functions. And by default, this background verification is not activated. You see it by default, it's disabled. We have to enable it. Uh, it means that um, the background verification uh, means that the controller will always send some information to the server and that the server will decide if he, if some, if one person have access or not. This will give us some, some advantages because we can have um, a global system, uh, not an individual. The controller is not deciding by itself, so it, it's, not a, it's not an individual part. In this case, with the background verification, we have a global system control from the software. But it's important um, that we decide what happens if the server goes offline, because all the advanced functions will, of course, only work if the server is online. I cannot have a who is in site list if I'm not online. So I have to decide what happens if the controller is, if the server is not online, because it can happen that um, uh, we lose connection because the cable is, someone cut the cable, or the server is um, is rebooted, or the server has some problem and goes offline. Then we have to decide what we want to do, which policy we want to have if the server goes offline. We can just select access denied. It means that if the server is offline, all the doors are closed. No one can access. Or we can select that it will continue work in normal conditions. The controller will continue working with the information that is stored inside of the controller, but uh, the controller will not send information to the server because the server is offline. So the people can still uh, go in and out, but if I have some restrictions in my um, advanced functions, these advanced functions will not work because I'm not online. So I think I forgot to say. So in this case, I will enable it to have the advanced functions. Uh, the advanced functions are based on uh, zones, okay? So we have, by default, we have a zone that is outside. I will create a new zone that is um, inside. Okay, so I have outside and inside. Um, in this case, I only have a controller with one door, so it doesn't make sense to have uh, more areas or more zones. In this case, uh, I have only one door and it's enough. Uh, now, I have to assign the readers that are, uh, go from one zone to the other. In this case, I have uh, my door, my, my controller has only one door, and the reader, the in reader of door one is to move from outside to inside. And the reader number one, the, the door number one out reader is to go from out, from inside to outside. Okay, here you see we have the who is inside. The who is inside, you see, okay, we have um, in this case, I have only one zone, and you can see that there's no one inside of this zone. So if I verify on reader number one in, and I update this information, you see that I have moved from outside to inside. Okay, here I have an updated list of the people that are inside of each of these uh, areas or zones. Uh, it's possible to export this information. Uh, this is sometimes requested if, if there's an emergency, I need an uh, online, I need a real-time list of the people that are inside of one building. We can generate uh, this list and export it and then print it out. Okay, the global anti-passback. 
we have seen before that we here we have the standard anti passback in this case it's the global anti passback and it's much easier to apply this anti passback and we have some special some more functions in this anti passback uh, first i enter the name i just have to select for which zone i want to apply this anti passback in this case it's for inside um, and i just selecting the zone in which I want to apply the anti passback. Uh, it doesn't matter how much doors I have in this, um, how much doors I have in this uh, area. Uh, all of them, if I if I go inside, I have to check out, or I will, it will not be possible for me to to go in again. Uh, we can also set a timed anti passback. Uh, it means that if I have check in in one room, in one area, uh, until 10 minutes has, after 10 minutes, I cannot go in again. Uh, I can set um, a reset for the anti passback. I select, for example, at three in the morning. And this means that at three in the morning, all the anti passback uh, information will be resetted. Okay, it's very common that um, I'm controlling the anti passback during the day, but there's uh, one one hour after closing that I open all the doors and the people leave the building. And if there are people leaving the building without checking out, when they arrive the next morning, um, they cannot go in because they didn't check out. So the anti passback will not allow them to go in again. Uh, that's why it's very typical to use reset for the anti passback at three in the morning. Everything is resetted and then I'm sure that next morning there will not there will not be any problem because of people that are not uh, that are not allowed because of the anti passback to enter the next day. Uh, here we can select if we want to apply this anti passback rules to all the people. If we want to apply them only for some selected people, or if we want to exclude some pre some people from these uh, rules. Um, in many cases. Uh, the anti passback rules I used because um, uh, uh, we want to avoid that the people um, do some cheating uh, because they have a card and someone enters with his card and he, got, he gives the card back to the next one and both of them enter with the same card. Or we want to avoid that someone goes out on a, any back door for smoking without uh, checking out for the for the time and attendance. So there can be some people that want to be excluded from that uh, from that uh, anti passback rules. Uh, the general manager manager can come and say, okay, the anti passback rules are for the normal employees, but I want to be excluded. So we can select exclude personnel, and we add some users. Miguel. So in this case, um, this anti passback rule will be for all the users, but Miguel will be excluded. Um, the global linkages is um, uh, is similar to our linkages that we have in uh, in our standard access control, but in this case, uh, the global linkage it will allow us in the trigger conditions to set also the trigger conditions that are um, that are only available with advanced functions. We will see later that we have an occupancy control in which I can set the maximum capacity of one area. So it can, in some situations, uh, if it's, uh, for example, a parking where I have um, 20 parking spaces, spaces if the 20 parking spaces are occupied. I want to activate an auxiliary output uh, that activates the red light of a traffic jam. So in this case, I, I uh, here with this linkage, um, I can, and the trigger conditions, I have also the advanced functions. That's a different to, difference to the um, normal, to the standard uh, linkage. Um, for interlock, it's also that I can have uh, interlock um, in the standard interlock. 
I can have only interlock between the doors that belong to the same controller. Here I can have an interlock between uh, doors that belongs to different controllers. I create a group of doors and then I can make a, a I can make um, uh, the interlock for that for that group of doors. The occupancy control is um, allows me to have the uh, maximum and the minimum capacity of uh, one area. So if I set the maximum capacity to 20, it means that um, it allows me to to have 20 people inside of inside area. And if someone else wants to to um, enter this area, he has to wait until one person leaves. So that, it's not possible to have more than 20 users. I can also set the minimum capacity. Maybe this is some kind of security uh, room, and it's not allowed that one people that one person is alone. And there must be always people. There must always be two people. So in this case, if there are three people, the third people, the third person can leave. But uh, if there are only two people, they cannot leave. They have to wait until another one comes. Uh, the configuration that this uh, it's not it's not very common, but uh, it can be some security room where it's always necessary that there's one one person always there. Mm. Okay, then finally. Um, we have the reports. Here we can see, uh, we can review all the reports from that day. Uh, we can also apply some filters and export the information. Um, you see that uh, here we have all the different modules. All the different modules are uh, each of them are it's like a separate software, uh, but all of them have always some linkage. Some 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 it's are linked in any way with the access control uh, module. So the access control module is the most important uh, module of, uh, of all of them, and the other one are just additions that uh, in some projects you will need. Uh, here in information, you can have some information about. Uh, the license information, the modules that you have activated. In this case, I, I have just installed the software and it allows um, a trial period of one month. After this one month, we have to activate the license. And uh, we just have to activate um, the modules. The li li license will allow us to activate only the modules that we need. So, in uh, if I have an installation with only 20 doors, I can activate a, a license with, uh, that supports 20 doors. And if the license don't have included any more modules, uh, these menus will disappear. I will only see the icons of the modules that belong to my license. Okay, um, go back to the presentation and um, this was uh, what I wanted to show you today. Um, here you have some, our contacts, my personal email contact, if you have some questions. Um, also our sales contact and our webpage if you want to look for more information. Uh, I will also open the chat if you have some questions. Um, yes. Um, hello, Elvis. How are you, Elvis? Uh, with a fire alarm system, how does it integrate with a fire alarm system? Well, it's it's possible to integrate the fire with a fire alarm system uh, using the auxiliary inputs. Uh, it means that uh, probably what you want is that if there's a fire, you want to open the doors. So we can. Uh, let me switch again to the to the software. Uh, in the linkages, we can we can link an auxiliary input with the, uh, with the opening of the door. 
so um, linkage uh, we can link Uh, trigger condition the trigger condition will be uh, auxiliary input shorted it means that uh, I have connected my fire alarm system to the auxiliary input and if this contact is shorted it has a shortcut uh, I can for example open a door uh, open a door in this case uh, is it possible to connect uh, hello Mauro long time since I see you the last time, <laughs> I think many years. <laughs> uh, it is, is it possible to connect ProFace to ZK Biosecurity? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, this is not the la uh, the version that, that I have shown you today is not the last version, this, but this version also support the uh, ProFace X. But uh, we will launch next week um, a new version that has uh, even more functions related with, uh, especially re related with our own VMS. And then in the new version of that ZK Biosecurity, we will have an own VMS with facial recognition cameras and, and especially functions related with our camera products. Uh, can we use facial recognition readers? Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, ProFace X and SpeedFace are supported. In. And also the um, uh, from the green, uh, it's the um, ProBio. Probio has also face, facial recognition. Uh, Surab, uh, again, to capacity control, does the system generate only some events or it blocks readers? Uh, it's, yes, uh, it, it will block the readers. It will block the readers. So if the, the maximum capacity is reached, uh, no one can enter it anymore. Uh, Fernando, hello, Fernando. Uh, will there be other webinars regarding uh, the new modules of biosecurity? Uh, yes, yes. We are uh, just now testing all the functions because it's not easy because um, uh, it's a big it's not a big change in access control functions. The big change is uh, that uh, in the new version uh, we will have our own VMS. It's a small VMS. So we will have a lot of uh, smart functions from the cameras and, and we have also face recognition from our cameras. So um, uh, there are a lot of things to, to, to test, but it's specially rega regarded with, our, with, with the cameras, not, not, with, the, not with the access control. Uh, if we can make a motor, if we can make a uh, webinar about uh, ProFace X and and and, Pro, and the speed phase. Yes, yes, uh, yes. But yeah, we, we we can yes we can we can add also. But there's no nothing special because the behavior of a speed phase and the ProFace X, uh, it's the same as a, a controller that I have shown you today. Uh, the only difference is that we can enroll the the, the face templates, uh, but we can. But if we do a second webinar, I can. We can also show the how to uh, how to enroll a finger uh, a face template a face template with our proof X. Hmm. Uh, okay, I'm don't, I don't know if I'm missing something. Uh, anyway, you have my, I show again my, uh, my personal like, email address. So if there are some questions, you can write me anytime. Also, if you have some su suggestions that you want, want to see in a new venue we now we can, as I told you, we are, we are preparing uh, to present all the new functions that we have the, in the new version. Okay, thank you. Have a nice day.